Golf Central on YouTube. Brought to you by TaylorMade. Country Club of Jackson in Mississippi, the site this week of the Sanderson Farms Championship, the fourth event on the PGA Tour schedule and a lot of low numbers in Mississippi, including four shooting a 64 on the opening round. One of those, Charlie Hoffman, you see at the top of that leaderboard there. And you look at Charlie here, leads and co-leads by round on his PGA Tour career. He's had cumulatively 18 times he's had the lead, but none of those he's converted into victory. He has won on the PGA Tour four times actually, but top 15 finish last week in the Dominican Republic, and he's playing with some belief right now. And he talked about that after his round. I played well last week. Uh, didn't get much out of last week, but uh, obviously today I played a very solid round of golf. Anytime a few under par around this track, so I'm pretty happy with to get eight under uh, first round. Is uh, really happy. Hit a lot of fairways, hit a lot of greens, and the greens I hit, I made putts. So uh, it's good, good uh, formula. Charlie, a veteran, 43 years of age, four-time winner, as I mentioned on the PGA Tour, but his last victory coming at the 2016 Valero Texas Open. Are you expecting him to keep this pace up? I think so. Uh, you heard him say that he did everything well, but uh, when you look at his iron play, it was sharp uh, in proximity to the hole today. He was second, uh, 21 feet, so he gave himself plenty of opportunities, and when a player sees some putts go in, then your confidence can grow, and I think it's a carryover from his good play last week. Another veteran in his 40s, Jimmy Walker, of course, a major champion, winning the PGA Championship at Baltusrol, but he has not won since. As you take a look at this statistic, he has struggled in his last seven starts, only one time as he played the weekend, that coming at Jack's tournament. Now, Jimmy has been battling for the last few years, pretty serious case of Lyme disease. He feels like he's turned the corner on that, and hopefully this will ignite positive return to major championship winning form. At least that's what he's thinking. Here's Jimmy Walker after his round. Well, honestly, I haven't. I haven't been playing very well, but I feel good, and it just it just hasn't really clicked yet. And um, I had some really good nine holes last week at home, and so I was like, oh, that's, that's starting to feel pretty good and seeing some putts go in. And, um, you know, I had one good round at the U.S. Open. My Thursday round was pretty solid. With, and uh, But last week at home was good. I've had some tendonitis in my elbow. Shoulder's been hurting. Uh, so it's been, it's been tough. I, I didn't do much last week at home. I just rested quite a bit and got out and played a few a few uh, holes with some buddies. But uh, it actually felt pretty good today. My physio is here, and we've been doing a lot of work on it this week. I want to go back to November of 2018. He had microdiscectomy uh, surgery, similar to what Tiger Woods had. Uh, didn't play again until September of 2019. Wasn't quite feeling his best after that surgery, but he thinks now things are moving in the right direction. He talked about where his game is after his round today. Yeah, I'm just out there trying to, you know, play good golf. Um, you know, I know that good golf transfers for me and is good enough to compete out here at the highest level. And, um, you know, I mentioned earlier um, that I hadn't, you know, done myself any favors coming back. Um, you know, poor scheduling. Um, you know, poor play, maybe came back a little early, but, you know, I kind of feel like I got my feet under me, um, getting more comfortable being on the road, being away from my family. And, uh, you know, some focus is just enjoying it and, and playing good golf and, you know, the res results will come. Sebastian, great playing, especially coming in, reeling off four birdies. Let's talk about what you did last year and coming here as the defending champion, even though there aren't fans out there. How much are you enjoying the walk around this golf course? It's, it's an awesome walk, you know, it just brings good memories. A lot of the holes, you know, just just kind of gathering memories from the past years. Uh, and it's just it's just a great walk. I, I, lo I like this course a lot. And, you know, I'm staying with the same family I did last year, so it kind of brings the same vibes. What about the confidence, not just your recent performance, but also how well you've played on this course? Can you feel it out there in terms of the way that you're attacking and shot shaping? Yeah, for sure. I felt like uh, I kind of kept the same strategy as last year. Just trying to, trying to be aggressive, trying to, trying to get some birdies, and I did it today, so I'm really happy with that. What is it about this layout, this venue, that really suits your game? Uh, I like it that you got to hit a lot of drivers. You know, you got to, I mean, for me personally, I feel like I, I hit a lot of drivers, and uh, I'm hitting it really good, and then you leave yourself a lot of wedges, and I like how my wedge game is doing right now, so I don't know, I just feel comfortable. Okay, Cockerell just told me that you and your caddy are both newlyweds too, so congratulations. You get to enjoy this week even more. Well played today. Thank you so much.
and he is one of four, tied for the lead at eight under par. And look at what Munoz has done in his last, well, three of his last four starts, and that's a top 20 finish at the Northern Trust, top 10 at the BMW, top 10 at the Tour Championship as well. Those are all the playoff events. Finished tied for 59th at the U.S. Open. So, and he's a solid player. They don't just hand out <laughs> invites to the Tour Championship. No. You've obviously got to earn your way there. And for him to finish inside the top 10, he's 27 years of age. That's the same age as Justin Thomas. That's the same age as Bryson DeChambeau. Um, are we about to see a star emerging here in Munoz? I'm going to say possibly because he has, he has the skill set to do it. And when you finish eighth in the FedEx Cup points race, uh, you've had a good season. But I might add, that might be the quietest eighth place finish in the FedEx Cup. But when I, when I look at what he did, he, he won the Sanderson Farms. And then at the RSM in the fall of the year, he finished third. So he got off to a great start. Uh, to the season, so he kind of established himself as to where he was going to be, and it was just a continuous. He kind of has that that golf swing and that mannerism, for me, like Angel Cabrera. It's kind of a free swinging guy. It doesn't look like he has a lot of technical thought going on, and he just goes ahead and lets it fly, and I like it. And obviously, he feels comfortable at the Country Club of Jackson, yeah. being a past champion. We'll see how he, uh, what he does rather on day number two in Jackson, Mississippi. He finishes with a 73, as I mentioned, had some momentum back after a couple of birdies on his closing nine, but then gave them back. But hopefully, like you mentioned, Billy, that closing birdie will give him some momentum as he heads into round number two. You see that scorecard. I want to show you another impressive scorecard, and that is of Scott Harrington. Maybe not the number, the final number, but look what he did on the 14th hole. That is a two at a par five, and that is an albatross? That is an albatross. All right, just double checking. Some go double eagle, some go albatross. Scott Harrington, a 39-year-old player, just his second year on the PGA Tour. And total albatrosses, the last six seasons, we already had two. Harry Higgs had an albatross uh, at the Safeway, first event of the year. Put himself in the contention to win that event. So, balls are going in everywhere, and Probably will continue tomorrow. Our coverage on Golf Channel, beginning with the Aberdeen Standard Investment Scottish Open, second round coverage. You heard the guys talk about the weather is supposed to be a little dicier tomorrow, so the score is probably not going to be as low. Then we head to New Jersey for the ShopRite LPGA Classic, 12.30 p.m. Then off to Mississippi for the second round of the Sanderson Farms Championship. And then my man, Billy Kratzer, and I will be right back here to put a bow on the day. And it is end of Thursday. What are you taking away from today? I love the way that Kevin Chappell came out and played. Uh, he made a lot of footage of putts, made 114 feet of putts, but his coach, Mike Blackburn, said, watch out for Kevin. He's going to play well this week. Mm. And he's off to a great start. My man, Billy Kratzer, and I'm Todd Lewis, and we appreciate you joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.